Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the problem of trying to generate very small reference and output currents. And our solution to this is going to be to use the Widlar current source, which is shown here in the BJT and in, in, in MOS form. Now, the basics of this particular current source are that we're going to reduce the VBE2 relative to the VBE1, and we're going to do that by placing a resistor R2 uh, in the respective emitter or source terminal uh, of the output stage. So if we look here, we know that we have a VBE1 across Q1. And based upon KVL, VBE1 is going to have to be equal to VBE2 plus the resistor drop VR2. We can say the same thing for the MOS device, except that we're going to use VGSs instead of VBEs. Again, VGS1 has to be equal to the sum of the drop VGS2 plus VR2. All right, so let's do our analysis for the BJT case. So we're going to be doing KVL around the base emitter loops. So we can say that VBE1 is equal to VBE2 plus VR2. And we know that VR2 is going to be equal to the output current times the resistance. All right, we can also substitute values in for the base to emitter voltages. All right, so here we say that I out times R2 is equal to VT ln of IR divided by IS minus VT times ln of I out divided by IS. And we can further simplify this. If we assume that the transistors Q1 and Q2 are equal, we can assume that the saturation currents ISs are equal, and we can combine the natural logarithms as we've done here. So now we have I out times R2 is equal to VT times the natural logarithm of IR divided by I out. Now, generally, we are going to know what value of IR and I out we want. And so we can iterate R2 until we have a solution. Now, of course, if you have a calculator or a program such as MATLAB, you can just directly solve this. One other thing to think about is what is the output resistance of the Widlar current source? So what is R out of the Widlar current source? Well, we've added a resistor to either the emitter terminal for the BJT or the source terminal for the MOS device. And so we can generally say that R out is equal to RO2 times one plus GM two times R2. So this is a positive. Because we've added this resistor in the emitter or source terminals, we've increased the overall output resistance of the current source. So uh, this becomes a better current source with the addition of that resistance. Now, the one drawback, of course, is that we also have a little bit of higher voltage requirement at the output than we would if we didn't have that resistance there. In the next video, we're going to look at a different problem. We're going to try and increase the resistance of the current source. And in this case, we're not going to worry about having a different output or uh, output current from our reference current. And we'll do that next.